Isn't it great to be alive? How you doing? I'm Ian Sullivan and welcome to The Head Mechanic, the home of plain speaking positivity. Now, a picture paints a thousand words, they say. So as a therapist, I'm constantly on the lookout for little analogies, little stories, little comparisons and examples that will illustrate a concept so much better than just words. So nature often provides these, but today I'd like to talk about the, the things we can learn, the fantastic life lessons we can learn from watching small children. Because obviously, if a, if a toddler can grasp something, then why would we as rational adults not be able to do the same? It's obvious, isn't it? Or is it? Let's try it out. How many attempts does it take a toddler to learn how to walk? The answer, of course, is it takes as, as many as it takes. You know, all kids start off with that Maggie Simpson thing going on, don't they? Toddle, toddle, bump, toddle, toddle, bump. But they persevere. How would it be if, if when we first started that first toddler thing, and we had a few falls, we said, do you know what? If I'm not doing laps of this living room by tonight, I'm finished with that walking. It's not for me. No good at it. We don't do it. We all learn how to walk or you know, 99.9% .9 of us do. Same with talking. You know, we have to make so many mistakes to learn how to talk properly. Thousands upon thousands of mistakes. And yet we do. We all persevere with it. Obviously some persevere more than others and some have their helpful brothers and sisters who take the mickey out of them and their attempts to speak, which holds them back a little. But we persevere, we all learn how to talk. So how is it then that for adults, as adults, we can often try something once or twice and decide, that's it, I'm no good at that. How many times, it maybe you've done it yourself, but you see people all the time say things like, computers, no, I'm no good at them. How many people do you know who say they can't dance, can't talk in front of people, can't do all kinds of things? We try something, we say, no, 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 that's, that's, that's not for me. Why is that? You know, we started, started off with the attitude of, if at first you don't succeed, try and try and try again. And yet on life's journey, somehow, we've come to believe this thing of, if at first you don't succeed, give up. Or worse still, don't even try things. Don't even try them because you'll only fail and make yourself feel worse. Right? So we all arrive into this world as expert learners. We all arrive with this attitude of, it doesn't matter how many times I have to try something, I will keep trying it till I get it. But as I say, on life's journey, we often lose this. Now, in my experience as a therapist, this is often to do with the, the words and the actions of parents, of teachers, of, of peers. And often in that chair over there, um, people sit and they tell me how their life was destroyed by some comment at a time when they were feeling particularly vulnerable. Well, look, you can put those things right. But the point is that somewhere along the line, we become self-conscious, we become afraid of failure. This is the number one fear in the world. Now, the number one phobia in the world, believe it or not, is the fear of public speaking. A New York Times survey once showed that more people, <laughs> this is ridiculous, more people were afraid of public speaking than there were of dying. Well, that sounds crazy, doesn't it? But if you're one of those people that has that fear, it's a very real fear and there's no rationalising it away. Um, so we become self-conscious, we become aware of the views of others, we become practised and good at, um, at accepting our shortcomings. But why should we? We come into this world pre-packaged to keep trying things until we succeed. Now, have you ever felt stuck in your life? You know, you've got the feeling. You're scared to go forward, you can't go back and you really don't like where you are. It's a horrible place to be, isn't it? Now, I wish I could say that I learned this stuff through, through textbooks and stuff, but the fact of the matter, the harsh fact is that I've learned this through bitter experience myself. You know, so if you feel this stuck occasionally, well, you know, welcome to the human race. We've all been there. The question isn't whether life is going to throw challenges at us. The question is always, how will we respond? Samuel Beckett wrote, fail, fail again, fail better. Because you can't get to be good at something without being prepared to fail many, many times. I was reading a book recently, I um, can't think of the name of it. It was called, uh, I don't know what it doesn't matter. But basically this guy, a journalist, he was watching a, 
an Olympic level ice skater practicing. She was trying to do a triple salto. Um, and her coach had like a big fishing pole thing with it with a string and a chain swivel thing on the end of it. And as she would jump and attempt this really complicated manoeuvre, he was holding the air for, for that split second so that she could get down the three times. So she did it successfully many, many times. Then he took the thing off the thing. And she tried it several times. She got two and a half turns, two and three quarters turns. And then she fell on her ass. And he was like, oh, that must be sore. That'll be the end of that. But up she gets and gets on with it. So when he spoke to her afterwards, and eventually, of course, she nailed it. He spoke to her afterwards and he said, did that not hurt? She said, yeah, it's really painful. But like, I'm used to it. That's how I learn. So he ran away and he did the calculations on this South Korean world champion skater and he estimated for her to be as good as she was, she would have to have fallen literally on her ass 20,000 times. 20,000 times. Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. He was asked at a symposium once because he'd done he tried thousands of different ways to, to make this, this bulb work. Right? And he was asked, how does it feel to have failed 9,000 times? And he says, I've never failed. I've never failed once. I've just found 9,000 ways it didn't work. And he only had to find the one way that it did work. And in so doing, he changed, completely changed the course of human history. How would it be if Thomas Edison had been like most of us? Oh, no good at that. I'll give it up. But he wasn't. Because it was his passion and he kept chasing it. And he was prepared to fail. How many times do you think Lionel Messi has dribbled up football? How many times has Ronaldo taken free kicks? How many thousands of times have they had to mess up in order to get as good as they are? So, what I'm saying to you is this. We come pre-packaged as learning experts. We have this ability. We lose it along the way. But this is the point. To get that back, to, get, to move ourselves forward, to regain the control of our lives, we don't need to learn anything new. We just need to rediscover something that we already arrived in the world with. Sometimes it's kind of like a you know, snow globe. Sometimes we just have to stop and let that settle and we can see clearly what was mystifying us before. We come into the world as expert learners and we can all rediscover it. And if you don't believe me that we come into this world as expert learners, just watch a toddler. It's there in plain view, isn't it? So anyway, thanks for listening and see you soon.